Welcome back aboard for part two of Shipping TV's unique video series, North Sea Roro, filmed as we sailed to Rotterdam and back aboard DFDS Seaways, Freight Only Roro Ferries, Suezia Seaways and Selandia Seaways. Today we're aboard Suezia Seaways. Now in part two we've just left the berth and are heading out towards the open sea. The day is overcast but very light winds are forecast for our trip and the weather should brighten up by the time we reach Rotterdam. The ship isn't quite fully loaded, there's space for a few more trailers but this void in the stowage is deliberate to allow turning space for trailer tugs when we unload. As we're heading out, the bridge workload lightens, so we can have a chat with the captain. When I started my career, I started at 18 years old as dishwasher right. on, the, on the route between Esberg and Harwich. And uh, later on, I went to be a cadet. After training ship in Denmark, I, mm -hmm. training ship Denmark, I went to DFTS as apprentice for only a few years. Then I uh, continued as normally decorating as uh, uh, because I was on uh, some of these uh, DFTS ships that they were sold out in the early 80s or mid 80s because of the economy crisis for the company at that time. Uh, so uh, I was in few other companies after navigation school uh, where I went in Copenhagen. I was finished in 87 and started in DFTS as young deck officer in February 88. And since that I have been for many, many years in, in the company. Uh, the last five years I've been here on Swedish Seaways. It's my second period here as captain. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we are trading between Rotterdam and Felix Dome. It is a nice job. It was hard in the start because mm -hmm. we should take this big license. So we uh, avoid to take any uh, pilots. Mm -hmm. So we save a lot of time now. So it's it's good. So you you can handle the ship at both ends. You don't need a pilot. No, we don't need. Yeah, uh, the only thing we need is uh, some rest hours. So our chief officer have also picked license for mm -hmm. Felix, though. So he relieved me and take now and then the arrival or departures in mm -hmm. Felix, though. But it's depending. This route is, yeah. It is very busy now. It's nearly full ship all the time, mm -hmm. and that is also very good. So the company it just uh, start up with also a, a Friday departure, mm -hmm. both from Rotterdam and Felixstowe, and that shows up that it is busy. Yeah. Uh, when we start for five years uh, ago, it's the cargo volume was was low. It has turned around so. You can see what happened. Maybe there's there's three ships now on mm -hmm. on the route, two sister ships, uh, where Swedish Seaways is one of them, and then Selandia Seaways, mm -hmm. and uh, then there's uh, the small Anglia Seaways. I think the route is very, uh, it's a good route. Uh, the mm -hmm. but th there's a very uh, huge competition between Stainer Line and mm -hmm. Copper Freight. Mm -hmm. They all have all have routes uh, more than once a day. Mm -hmm. uh, between the, the Rotterdam area and, and, and the UK, mm -hmm. so it, it, it is tough. You can see here, just in, in front of us, we have uh, one of the two sister ships, Surrey and Cambodian. We always uh, have a, a challenge with them in and out of harbor, yeah. yeah. and then we have the Stena Line, the, the, the huge uh, road parks, ferries. Uh, Stina Britannica and Stina Hollandica, huge, huge ships, yeah. It's unusual to be able to have a stroll round a modern freighter's engine room while the ship is underway. But Chief Engineer Bo Pedersen offered a quick tour and we immediately said yes please. Right now we are using uh, approximately 900 kilowatts and that's because we are uh, working on the scrubber system as well where we are cleaning the exhaust gas and that needs a lot of water for cleaning. So approximately 900 kilowatts right now. The ship has three generators to provide power for all its electrical needs, ranging from domestic uses to reefer plugs 
by thrusters to scrubber system. These run on gas oil, that's diesel fuel, just like cars and traps ashore. Here are the fuel separators. The first two clean up the main engine's heavy fuel oil and the third cleans diesel oil. This second set cleans up the ship's lubricating oil as it circulates back from the engine. Suezia Seaways also makes her own drinking water by distillation process. The water comes out safe and pure. It's also filtered, chemically treated and finally UV treated to ensure its purity. This freshwater supply delivers water to the ship's domestic hot and cold system. The ship's main propulsion engines rise up from deck 1 to deck 2 with plenty of access for service needs. The engines are rated at 10,800 kilowatts each, that's roughly 14,400 horsepower per unit. They drive variable pitch propellers linked directly to the bridge controls so power and direction changes can be applied quickly and seamlessly. The main engines are also equipped with electrical generators driven from the propeller shaft so the auxiliary diesel generators can be turned off when the ship is underway. This pair of pumps draw high volumes of water from the sea chest into the scrubber system, but before we get to that, we just have to stop to see a major part of Suecia Seaway's firefighting system, 26 tonnes of liquid CO2 capable of killing a fire in any of the ship's enclosed spaces. The exhaust gas leaving these funnels is mainly steam and the large white structure here houses the scrubber equipment. Scrubber technology has a straightforward aim, but it's expensive to buy into. Conventional heavy fuel oil is a relatively cheap fuel, but it does produce polluting sulfur dioxide and other pollutants. And DFDS Seaways has been busy installing scrubber systems across a range of its ships. Raw exhaust gas enters at the top of the narrower cylinder and travels down. It then travels up the wider cylinder and 99% of sulfur dioxide is removed. In this system, as it's operating at present, the main pollutant is voided to the sea, but it can operate as a closed loop, so sulfur dioxide is stored and treated, rendering it harmless for disposal ashore while in port. Our final stop on this whistle-stop tour of Suecia Seaways is at the bow, where we're now standing by the bow thruster drives. Again, these use variable pitch propellers to allow fast responses to bridge controls. Your job must be completely varied all the time. Yes, one day you are dismantling the main engine, the next day you are fixing a light down in a, yeah, in a room in the accommodation perhaps working on the toilet system or somebody's toilet has uh, clocked up and we are on that one as well. How did you get to become a chief engineer? It, it's a progress. Of course you get the uh, education, mm -hmm. but then you need to uh, have the entire... Uh, you start at the bottom of the food chain, so mm -hmm. to speak, as uh, being a junior engineer, and then you become third engineer, second engineer, first engineer, and then when you know everything, you become chief engineer. When you know everything. Exactly. Excellent. But you need to have a certain uh, amount of uh, sailing time before you can get your certificate for uh, getting the next uh, line, so to speak. Now you just showed me one of the pistons and one of the cylinder liners. That's, got, that's a major job to take out, isn't it? That must be a big job. Uh, depending on uh, which crew you have at the present, if you have the experienced guys and right. so on, I would say uh, changing the piston and liner and uh, bearings takes around uh, uh, seven, eight hours. So not that big a job? No, mm. no. Uh, it does take a day out of, take one day doing it, but yeah. uh, basically it's... Would that would take you out of service for a day or not? No, no, oh. no, no, we just do it during uh, harvest day. Right. Oh. Oh. So never, we never do any uh, maintenance 
which would take us out of service mm. unless it's something that breaks down. Big, big. Which, uh, yeah. Luckily, it does not happen that often. Only because you look after it so well. <laughs> Some would say that, yes. <laughs> We're approaching the coast of Holland quickly now, with the bulk of the sea passage behind us. So come back and join us again for episode 3, when we'll be cruising up the new waterway from its entrance towards the DFDS Rotterdam terminal. Then we have a chance to watch Captain Nielsen put Suecia Seaways through a 180 plus degrees swing and place her neatly alongside the berth after entering the basin stern first. We'll see you soon.